before they stop tourists. How to get to Kawa Aijin, facts about Aijin, and what to expect. After our amazing encounter with Mount Bromo, it was now time for us to go and witness the majestic and unique blue fire phenomenon at Kawa Aijin. If you haven't checked out our two previous videos out that make up this miniseries yet, make sure to watch them on our channel before getting started with this one. Welcome back to another episode of Feepin Travel. Join us on our journey around the world as we share our best travel tips, guides, and amazing experiences with you. If you're not a part of our community yet, hit the subscribe button now so you never miss out on our latest and greatest uploads. Remember, we travel not to escape life, but for life not to escape us. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at our experience visiting the Blue Fire Natural Phenomenon at Aijin. Let's get started. Let's start with some quick facts about Kawa Aijin. Aijin Volcano in East Java, Indonesia, contains the world's largest acidic volcanic crater lake called Kawa Aijin, famous for its turquoise color. Picturesque Kawa Aijin is the world's largest highly acidic lake and is the site of a labor-intensive sulfur mining operation in which sulfur-laden baskets are hand-carried from the crater floor. During the day, the volcano looks like a normal volcano, but at night it is a dazzling light show. Aijin Crater Lake is the world's largest such body of water filled with hydrochloric acid. It is also the largest blue flame area in the world owing to the large amounts of sulfur deposits. The blue fire blue flame at Aijin should not be mistaken as molten lava. The blue glow is actually the light from the burning of sulfuric gases when they emerge from cracks in the volcano at high pressure and temperature. When they come in contact with the air, they ignite, sending flames up to 5 meters high. This happens during all hours of the day but is only visible during the night. Coffee plantations cover much of the Aijin caldera floor, and tourists are drawn to its waterfalls, hot springs, and dramatic volcanic scenery. How to get to Kawa Aijin To save time and money, book your tour to Bromo or Kawa Aijin once you reach the city of Yajiakarta. This is the cultural hub of Indonesia and a must-visit during your trip. Once you reach Yajiakarta and have had some time to settle in, have a chat with your hotel receptionist or manager. They are usually inundated with offers from tour companies and can recommend book your tour for you. We covered sunrise at Bromo and the blue fire at Kawa Aijin with a drop off to Bali which was our final destination. What to expect? If joining an organized tour, pick up from your rest house will be between 10 to 11 p.m. It is roughly a 90 minutes drive to the base of Kawa Aijin from the neighboring town of Banyuwangi, where it is likely you will be staying. It is highly recommended that you rent a mask from one of the locals before you begin your trek up Kawa Aijin. The sulfur fumes are noxious and you will need one of these masks for sure. If you fail to get a mask at the beginning of the trek, you will have a hard time finding one later. We paid 50,000 rupees for each mask when we went, but prices change according to demand at the time. There will be an opportunity to visit the toilets before you begin your trek. Use the washrooms even if you think you do not need to. We assure you there will be no further opportunities until you return from the trek around 8 a.m. Take an adequate amount of water with you. You will need it. Unlike Bromo, Kao Aijin is not chilly and you do not need to dress warmly. The trek and the hot sulfur gases will take care of that. Whoever your trekking guide is, they are responsible for you. Trust them completely. Chances are that they work as a miner and Aijin during the day, which means they know this volcano quite well. The Aijin entrance fees were not included as part of our tour package, which meant that we had to pay extra at these venues. It is worth checking what is and what is not covered in your tour. We paid 150,000 rupees because we were foreign tourists visiting during the weekend. A flashlight headlamp isn't necessary, but it'll be helpful. Important please do tip your guide well. The guides here are miners working during the day and their job is more difficult than you can imagine. Even a few dollars can make a world of difference to them. And finally, 
We know that they say that travel is food for the soul, but trust us, this experience at Kawa Aijin will leave more than satisfaction in your heart. It will also instill confidence, love, and endurance into your soul. Happy travels! With that, we've reached the end of this video all about our experience visiting the Blue Fire Natural Phenomenon at Aijin. What do you guys think about the Blue Fire Natural Phenomenon and Kawa Aijin itself? Get involved and let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this one and found it interesting, remember to leave a like on the video so we know to make more for you. Also, subscribe to Feepin Travel for even more amazing travel content, just like this video. As always, thanks for watching. See you again soon in another episode.